Radial Head Fracture, a video lecture. This video has been produced from a book source of key techniques in orthopedic surgery. We would like to thank editors Stephen H. Stern, Christopher M. Bono, and Matthew D. Saltzman. Radial head neck fractures can be demanding injuries requiring stable fixation to allow for early range of motion and to avoid significant postoperative stiffness. This chapter will discuss the evaluation and management as well as key points in the open treatment of radial head slash neck fractures, with specific attention paid to a safe approach as well as rigid fixation. Indications 1. Displacement greater than 2 mm with articular step-off deformity or angulation of the neck. 2. Displaced Mason type 2 radial head fracture associated with elbow instability, a. Associated injury to interosseous ligament slash distal radio ulna joint, DIUJ, elbow collateral ligaments, or coronoid process. 3. Large fragment, more than marginal lip or greater than 25% articular surface. 4. Mechanical block to motion, forearm rotation or elbow flexion slash extension. Contraindications. 1. Mason type 3 fractures with severe comminution precluding rigid internal fixation, a. Consider excision. b. Excision with prosthetic replacement when associated with injury to the interosseous ligament slash druge, collateral ligaments, or coronoid process, i. Positive radius pull test proximal migration of radius at druge under fluoroscopy with longitudinal traction after radial head resection. 2. Low demand patient, consider excision if fragment less than 25% of articular surface. 3. Open fracture with contaminated wound. Preoperative preparation. 1. Evaluation, a. Document complete neurovascular examination, especially posterior interosseous nerve. b. Assess medial collateral ligament, tenderness and valgus stress test at 30 degree flexion. C. Assess interosseous ligament slash druge. S. Six low pressed lesion. I. Tenderness along the forearm interosseous membrane. 2. Tenderness slash instability at druge versus the contralateral side. D. Assess for mechanical block. I. If pain limits the exam, consider aspiration of joint hematoma with sterile intraarticular injection of a local anesthetic to allow evaluation of range of motion. 2. Adequate radiographs. A. Ontario posterior and lateral of the elbow and or radial head view. B. 90 90 degree posterior anterior view of the wrist with contralateral comparison view to assess for longitudinal stability. C. Consider computed tomography, CT, scan with axial, sagittal, and coronal reconstruction to assess fragment size, comminution, and degree of displacement for questionable cases. 3. Prepare patient for possible need for excision slash replacement if reduction and internal fixation technically impossible. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. 1. Positioning, patient supine on operating table with affected arm positioned over the chest versus supine with an arm board. 2. Tourniquet placed high up on arm. 3. Can be done with regional or general anesthetic. 4. Instrumentation, A. K wires. B. Mini fragment internal fixation set with reconstruction plates. C. Headless compression screw set, micro slash mini. Tips and pearls. 1. Place tourniquet as high on the arm as is possible to ensure adequate exposure available. A. If the arm is short or obese, consider using sterile tourniquet. 2. Administer intravenous antibiotics prior to tourniquet inflation. 3. Hold arm in position by clamping stock in at slash lap sponge over hand to drapes using non-penetrating clamp. 4. Place hardware on the radial head slash neck within the posterior lateral safe zone, 110 degree arc on the lateral side of the radial head extending 65 degrees anteriorly and 45 degrees posteriorly from the midpoint of the radial head with the arm in neutral rotation. Figure. Check for impingement of hardware in the proximal radio ulna joint prior to closure by visualizing the radial head while pronating and supinating the forearm at various positions of elbow flexion slash extension. 6. 
Repair lateral capsule complex carefully to avoid instability and assess stability to varus slash valgus stress at completion of case. Figure. What to avoid? 1. Avoid injury to posterior interosseous nerve. A. Keep forearm pronated to move nerve out of operative field. Figure. B. Avoid placing retractors such as Homan around the radial neck, instead, use right angle retractors. C. When extending the exposure distally for neck fixation, identify the posterior interosseous nerve distally. Two, avoid placing hardware that will impinge on the proximal radio ulna joint by placing it in the safe zone or countersinking. A. Headless compression screws can be used, especially when placed in the articular surface. Three, avoid the definitive use of K wires, as they do not provide stable fixation. Four, avoid passive motion exercises postoperatively. Operative Technique Approach 1. Prepare and drape the arm in standard sterile fashion ensuring adequate exposure available. 2. Exsanguinate the arm and inflate the tourniquet. 3. Make a lateral incision beginning proximally at the lateral epicondyle and extending distally over the radial head and neck. Figure. Dissect down through the subcutaneous fat while attempting to preserve cutaneous nerves. Identify the interval between the anconius, posterior, and the extensor carpi ulnaris, anterior. Divide the fascia at this interval and carefully separate the two muscles. Proximally, continue to expose the capsule to the lateral epicondyle. 5. With the forearm fully pronated to keep the posterior interosseous nerve away from the operative field, figure, incise the capsule beginning at the lateral epicondyle and extend distally, figure. Proximally, elevate the capsule off of the anterior aspect of the lateral epicondyle. Avoid posterior dissection so as not to injure the lateral collateral ligament complex which lies posterior to the equator of the capitellum. Distally, the annular ligament may need to be divided and elevated to gain access to the neck for more distal fractures. If further exposure of the neck is necessary, identify the posterior margin of the supinator, look for oblique fiber direction. With the forearm in full pronation, divide the supinator at its posterior margin. Identify the posterior interosseous nerve to avoid injury. Procedure. 7. Debride fracture hematoma to visualize the fracture pattern. 8. Reduce the fracture fragments to reconstruct the radial head. Provisional fixation with small K wires may be possible, although often difficult due to the small size of the fragments. Nine, cancellous bone graft can be used for larger defects or for articular depression. Ten, fixation, obtain rigid internal fixation to allow for early active range of motion. A, radial head fracture alone, choices for fixation include mini fragment screws, 1.5 to 2.7 millimeters, placed in the safe zone, figure. If unable to place in the safe zone, 
Consider countersinking a mini fragment screw or using a micro slash mini headless compression screw that can be placed below the articular surface. I. Lag screws can be placed with manual compression across fracture site without over drilling of the proximal fragment to avoid comminution of the proximal fragment. However, headless compression screws can also avoid this complication too. If bone stock allows, over drilling of the proximal cortex for lag technique can be completed. 11. Assess reduction and check for hardware impingement by pronating and supinating the forearm in various positions of flexion and extension. Modify hardware placement if impingement occurs at the proximal radio ulna joint. 12. Assess valgus stability and consider repair of medial collateral complex if unstable. Closure. 13. Irrigate the wound. 14. Release the tourniquet and obtain hemostasis. Consider using a drain if needed. 15. Repair the lateral capsular complex primarily in interrupted fashion with absorbable sutures. If traumatically avulsed, consider reattaching the capsule to the lateral epicondyle with suture anchors. Care is taken not to overlap the capsular closure to avoid postoperative stiffness. 16. Close subcutaneous tissue in interrupted, inverted fashion with absorbable sutures. 17. Close skin with staples, nylon, or proline. 18. Dress in sterile fashion and place in bulky dressing with posterior splint in 90 degree flexion and neutral rotation.